Hi everyone, it's Victor speaking. I know today my camera is not the greatest, but I could not find a great spot in the flat. So anyway, I hope you can hear me well, and I hope um, this video will help you to understand Mercury in Virgo. One of the reasons why I chose um, to speak about this was because Mercury will enter the sign of Virgo on the 11th of August which is actually quite important because that's going to be that uh, double eight uh, lion gate portal as well. So it's going to be happening on the very same day. Now, I have already spoken about this gate portal um, in the new moon video. So um, if you want to gain a little bit more knowledge about that, then I recommend listening to that part. If you would like to have a reading with me or Sweaty, then um, go on my website and then choose the service you need so we can help you with your career choices or life path or just you need a general prediction of what the next year might unfold for you. Then just contact us and then we are at your hands. So Mercury enters the sign of Virgo. This is quite exciting. Mercury is in its home sign, and on top of that, it's exaltation as well. So it's going to be entering a double-bodied sign. Virgo is a double-bodied, one of the four ones. And the, one of the reasons why it is because um, Virgo is between the summer and the autumn period. So, and those signs are actually double-bodied. Now, Virgo is a feminine sign, and uh, by modality, um, it has got mutable energies. And Virgo is the temple of Mercury, more like the feminine side of Mercury. Now, you might be wondering why on earth uh, does Mercury have got rulership and exaltation as well in the sign of Virgo? Uh, one of the reasons, I mean, I can talk about this for quite a long time, but um, I won't be doing that. I just want to give you a little bit of a clue. Um, the, the exaltation position of planets are more lunar nature. And the rulership is more about uh, solar nature. Now, what happens is that every single planet has got their own... Um, uh, um, feminine or masculine side. So for instance, Venus is a feminine planet. Saturn is a masculine planet. However, Mercury is a neutral one. So he does not really represent uh, any of the genders. Basically, if you look at the glimpse of Mercury, then Mercury is the only planet which carries all three elements. So you can see the crosses and then you can see that little um, half circle on top. So it's all about embodying the body, the spirit uh, as well. So therefore he does not need the gender. Now, plenty of people actually, or plenty of astrologers, um, and I am one of those as well, associate Mercury with Jesus energy. And I'm going to tell you why, because Mercury has got um, a planetary joy in the, in the first house. And that's the moment when we take breath, right? And then uh, if Mercury has the planetary joy in the first house, which is the fifth from the ninth, so the son or the daughter of a God, then we get to Jesus, okay? Of course, Mercury is something to do with delivering messages and then reconnecting the divine, uh, the divinity with the human uh, fields. So basically, Hermes was traveling between the heaven as well as the earth, passing on messages to the human beings. So uh, Mercury is kind of the only planet which can take on both, both roles of the feminine and the masculine as well. And he's a little bit of a trickster. So his gender very much depends on the closest planet to him. And that's what he tends to be kind of copying. Now the rulership position is very much about being at home, being at ease. Imagine that you might be a very good guest somewhere else, but you still, uh, you, you still wouldn't do things you would do at home. So for instance, uh, 
you know, me making a video for you, I'm going to try to bring my best face forward, meaning I'm going to put a T-shirt on. However, when I'm at home, I don't wear a T-shirt. I'm uh, running around in an underwear and so forth, because obviously it's summer, it's too hot, right? So that's kind of like the rulership energy. The planet can do uh, anything, whatever they want to. Uh, let's put it this way. Um, you know, this is the sweet home type of feeling. It's good everywhere, but the bestest is at home. So I kind of feel like Mercury has done his training and prepared to be in his home sign since he left um, uh, Gemini. And uh, of course, when Mercury is in another sign, then he has to compromise according to the position of the ruler. So I'll give you an example there. Let's suppose that Mercury is in the sign of Leo, then um, his qualities will depend on the sun and maybe the sun is going to be somewhere in the second house. So then Mercury is going to have some financial fluctuation or the spotlight is going to be on the financial situations as well, but in a Leo way, right? So Mercury is all about thinking. Uh, Leo is all about being in the limelight. And let's say the second house is going to be about uh, spending money. And maybe Mercury is going to be in the third house. I'm going to be spending money on a telephone, for instance. Right? So Mercury is the planet of intelligence. Um, any type of back and forth games, such as the basketball, because you're running back and forth. This, uh, this planet shows the urge to communicate with others, to connect, to link things, and kind of negotiate as well. So Mercury has got this academic interest energy to it, but also it shows in your chart how you form opinions. This is a very analytical planet. Uh, it tends to use the logical mind. Now, I kind of feel like this Mercury really in the sign of Virgo talks about kind of like a peak performance. So um, it experienced the home environment, it experienced the fun, and it gets to the point where now we need to sort out everything what we've learned so far. Uh, and uh, Mercury here kind of needs to specialize in something. Virgo's one of abilities is to, or Virgo needs to learn to specialize in things. They can't be doing uh, 10 things at once. And that's very important. Um, and Mercury, which is a multitasking planet, kind of needs to embrace the Virgo energies because it can become a little bit scattered, right? So Virgo is here to kind of help that and kind of putting like an order into place, a system in place. So for instance, imagine that you've got all these documents, Mercury, and then you want to be color coding them, that the pink is going to be the invoices, the green is going to be the, I don't know, the income related documents and all those type of things, right? So Mercury kind of needs to learn uh, to do that. Uh, Mercury here is very much about attention to details. It becomes very specific. And probably Mercury says here that uh, making a small change actually can lead to a huge improvement. So we know that sometimes we have to make all these huge changes in our life. Um, because let's say with Pluto, usually with Pluto, you know, the, the world turns upside down and all of a sudden we live somewhere else. You know, we change job, we change partners and all those type of things. However, Mercury is telling you now that those little changes you can make today, if you don't uh, delay things or you don't postpone things, actually can lead to a huge change uh, in the future. So um, kind of like I would say this is the uh, macro and the micro management type of planet here in the sign of Virgo. So Virgo is all about lifestyle choices, scheduling, routine. So it invites you to, to put some routine and system in place in your life. I mean, don't get me wrong, Mercury is gonna spend here two and a half weeks. So therefore, you know, at the end of the month, around the 31st, it's going to be uh, going into the sign of Libra, which of course I'm gonna be making a video about. Um, so you're not going to change the world entirely, but you might want to be looking at where the Virgo cusp is in your chart, and maybe that's where you want to be doing some type of order. 
Uh, Mercury in Virgo is quite practical. It is an organized placement. Uh, and as I said, <laughs> it's not necessarily about organizing everything, but maybe if uh, Mercury enters your sixth house, then yes, maybe some work-related documents needs to be organized. Or maybe if Mercury enters your second house, then some financial related documents need to be organized and so forth. Or maybe Mercury going into your sixth house might tell you that you're gonna have to have a new health regime. Uh, Mercury in Virgo has got a little bit of a minimalist approach. So it likes simplifying things, uh, but the main goal here is to kind of increase efficiency. So one of the reasons why I chose this um, picture in the background, you can see kind of like the nerve system, which is very much uh, Mercury and energy. Uh, and of course, Mercury is all about how we process information and how we actually deliver that message as well. So you can see the nerve system there and then uh, it's very chaotic. So Mercury kind of needs to learn here which road, road I'm going to be taking first and how can I make sure that it's going to get passed down to those smaller routes as well. So it's all about creating a plan, creating a strategy and kind of like uh, creating a cohesive system. So organizing and order is... Um, very much about what Mercury in Virgo will be talking about. We can also call Mercury in Virgo is like a master analyst, and we do need to be uh, careful about that. Of course, every single position has got their positive and negative side as well. Uh, Mercury kind of represents your uh, brain uh, thinking process, right? So we can get stuck in our head. So we can become a little bit restless, and then we start thinking about, who have I, have I perfected everything the way it had to be done? And then, of course, it can lead to um, uh, uh, um, postponing things. So Mercury in Virgo needs to be careful of not wanting to thrive for perfection all the time, not running on uh, 120, 150 percent. Uh, it's more about measuring the process. So I put extra 10% today, I put extra 10% tomorrow, and then how far can I get? Now, Virgo is actually Mercury. With Mercury, it's kind of like an eternal youthful quality. So one of the ways how they actually depict um, in the symbol and cards, the mercurial qualities that we've got this uh, rich woman, uh, a princess, who is very beautiful. And then we've got the servant who is also very beautiful and they are walking in the garden and then they are talking. So with Mercury in Virgo, we always have got a little bit of a, a self-critical side to ours. We can become very nitty gritty. We can pick up on words or we can actually misinterpret them. Um, so that's again, something we do need to be uh, careful about. So another way how you might see Mercury in Virgo is that having a woman who is kind of like planting seeds in the garden and then she's on her knees and by the way, she's a virgin. Now, I don't necessarily um, um, try to say that uh, Virgo is actually very much of a, a virgin type of energy, but there is that kind of like sacrificing element to it. Virgo likes controlling. So she, uh, she is one of the four controlling signs. And therefore, uh, Mercury here kind of needs to understand or learn about how to lose up a little bit. Um, Mercury and Virgo people usually have got a very strong contrast between light and dark or between innocence and adulthood. So somehow you're always gonna see this contrast uh, contracts um, in their life. So they have got better qualities of life. They've got a little bit of a darker qualities of uh, life as well. Usually something they learned in childhood. So Mercury in Virgo is very good at uh, multitasking, as I mentioned, uh, but Virgo does need to specialize in something. It's kind of like a crafty sign. 
So positive keywords probably here are something rational, logical, it can be very meticulous, organized, very reliable. So hiring someone with Mercury in Virgo is actually quite good. Unless, you know, some of the, some of, probably if you, so if you've got Mercury in Virgo, then your son is either in Leo, Virgo or Libra. So that kind of indicates to me that um, having a Mercury in Virgo, but Leo, Sun, that might be not the greatest employee, for instance, because eventually that person wants to get further and they want to be shining and they might not be the greatest team players. However, I would like to point out that this really depends on different type of aspects. So don't take it personal if you are not like that, because of course, <clears throat> Mercury in your chart can be um, afflicted, can be uh, uh, touched by, you know, benefit planets as well. Um, but from a pure energy point of view, which is actually very Virgo-like, the purity, Virgo is all about cleanliness and uh, uh, OCD type of stuff. So, yeah, but anyway, what I wanted to mention from this employment point of view, that having Mercury in the sign of Virgo and maybe the sun in Virgo or uh, sun in Libra, actually that could be a very good position for uh, employing someone because those are going to be team players, those are going to be very hard working as well. So Virgo is very much known for being meticulous uh, with details. And um, um, however, it can be sometimes a little bit rep repetitive. Uh, especially verbally. So they want to be communicating precisely, probably when it comes to an accent, they've got a little bit of a, like a posh accent because they don't want to sound stupid or they want to sound educated. Remember that Mercury is kind of like the academic interests. And it's quite hard to please them actually because um, they have got huge uh, high expectations. And if, they, if you are unable to live up to it, Mercury in Virgo can get a little bit uh, disappointed, okay? So remember that the uh, planet is the verb and the sign shows how that planet acts, right? So if Mercury is the planet of communication, then Virgo does it in a precise way. Right, so they are very good at reading the small print. They are very good at picking up on um, uh, spelling mistakes and all those type of things. And let me give you an example. So my Mercury is in um, uh, Capricorn, but in the third decan, which is actually a Virgo decan. So when, it was, when I was a lot younger, that Virgo quality was really coming through because I was picking up on people's uh, like, um, in a grammatically incorrect way of speaking. And I remember I went down to the library and I was opening up these books to learn uh, like these uh, fancy words so I can actually impress my literature teacher and uh, I can impress my classmates. And then um, it, it went too far. I went to the extremes and then people ended up uh, not understanding me. Uh, because I was using just words people don't... I'll give you an example, for instance, in English, you know. Let's say I want to say that my father died. And instead of that, I started saying that my father kicked the bucket. And the younger generation just looked at me and they were like, what a hack. And it wasn't really in English. It was in my language, in my native language, Hungarian, when I did that. Uh, but uh, up till now, I do love... Uh, fancy words, in, even in English. I love proverbs. I love using them while I speak. Uh, you know, like my friend uh, a couple of days ago said something to me and then I was like, you know, oh, you, you heard about the hungry um, um, oats, I mean, the oats and um, anyway. So, <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's on Virgo uh, territory, and by the way, even my Mercury falls onto Virgo toward as well. So it has got really much of a Virgo-like quality. And I just wanted to kind of uh, illustrate um, uh, that speaking style. So, and Virgo uh, Mercury expects 
kind of a uh, lot from others as well because they are perfectionists. They like actually exploring every single angle of a, uh, of a dilemma before they make any decision. And therefore, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for them and then they easily get frustrated uh, because they've got a little bit more like a slow and steady approach, even though it's a mutable sign. Remember, it's an earth one and the earth one is more about stability. So it, uh, the earth signs are quite down to earth. And this uh, Mercury uh, in the sign of Virgo is probably one of the most intelligent. They can really utilize uh, different types of ways to communicate to others. They are good at analyzing behaviors. They are ready to study hard and uh, they are definitely paying attention to those little nitty gritty details as well. So basically the small print, right? So. Uh, on the negative side, Mercury can become very harsh and judgmental as well, especially when people don't live up to their expectations or others might become somehow off-putting for them. And then um, they just kind of withdraw them themselves from those people. But also uh, Virgo is the sign of service. So Mercury becomes very helpful here, very practical, practically helpful. So, you know, like, oh, you need a hand, I don't, I don't know, you need thousand uh, pounds loan. You know, I can't give you money, but I can actually go and uh, offer you a job and then you can come to my garden and then you can sort that out once a week and so forth. So uh, Mercury in Virgo is actually ready to improve other people's situation as well. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much what I wanted to share about uh, Mercury in Virgo. So you might want to be looking at uh, what house your uh, Mercury, oh, I mean, sorry, what house Mercury will be transiting in your chart. And that's when you might want to bring some, some, some order um, into that area of life, kind of like making the chaos vanish from the department at least. But you can also look at what other house Mercury rules, basically where the Gemini house cusp is. And, um, and then, yeah, basically do a little bit of a spring clean there, which is very Virgo-like. So thank you very much for your attention. And then if you did like the video, press like and uh, share with others and ring the notification bell. And if you need a personal reading with someone, then please go on my website and then choose either myself or Sweaty. Thank you, everyone, and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.